So that equates somewhat to a management level and thus a management mentality. And when they go out into the private sector or back into civilian life, uh, generally they have a, a, a Republican philosophy and a management philosophy. Uh, but once they come to understand after they've been in a workforce run by uh, a control-oriented owner or, or uh, uh, policy-level management, uh, that uh, there's more to what's going on than they because they're pilots and at the upper end of the economic scale immune from this process of union busting. Uh, I have found with the pilot unions I've worked with that many of them could be role models for some of the industrial unions that I've worked with. I, I've seen unity uh, in these unions, uh, solidarity, if you will, uh, that some industrial unions could learn from. Uh, it would seem to me that if I was in the union busting business, I would attempt to replicate that military hierarchy in the administration of the company so that the pilots would simply transition from the military to a very comfortable authoritarian environment where orders are issued in a hierarchical fashion top down. Have you seen that at any of the other properties that you Oh, sure. That, that, that's a, a, an early intention. If, if the company can get away with uh, maintaining that aura, uh, uh, they'll certainly do so. But I think most pilots, you know, if you wish to, to separate them from other working people, uh, after a while, they realize that uh, it's not the military. Uh, it's the world of business. It's cold-blooded. It's cold-hearted. Uh, and uh, where people need a collective voice, collective bargaining, to equate to any kind of real justice on the job, uh, or if they, they want to be somewhat of a threat to that obsession for control, the only legitimate uh, effective vehicle available to them is collective bargaining, is a union. You mentioned earlier in, in the interview that companies will attempt to provide a, a, an atmosphere for the employees that uh, we are in this together, that we're all f uh, friends here, we're all one family. Uh, how does that impact negotiations with the pilots at various airlines. Is it possible to have a family environment in the company and conclude a successful contract? No, it, it's really not. Although, you know, a company will go to great lengths to try to create the illusion that you're all one big happy family and that actually you're better off in a direct relationship without the intrusion and interference of an outside, uh, disinterested, self-serving third party. Uh, but the reality is that, uh, you know, that's a ruse. Uh, I know a lot of companies over the last decade or so have installed uh, employee participation programs. They come under various labels, quality circles, rotating round tables, uh, lots of different labels. Uh, they are purely uh, a prong into the employee grapevine, uh, an ability to allow employees to vent, but also uh, a vehicle for the company to uh, understand more and defuse uh, any troublemaking uh, from this workforce. Uh, but the reality as far as employee participation devices are that they are purely union busting devices. The only time they're effective, and, and, and I would uh, uh, endorse them, is when there is a union in place and the union is an equal partner in that program. But where there is no union and there is no equal partnership, it's a union-busting device. How often do companies attempt to end run around the union and uh, communicate directly with the employees? Every opportunity they can. Uh, you know, technically under law, an employer cannot undermine the union. But undermine is, you know, is a very hazy term. And uh, any time an employer can inject something to arouse suspicion or create divisiveness, they're going to do so. Uh, because union busting is divide and conquer. And the one thing that I was never able to penetrate in my union busting days was unity, solidarity. If I couldn't cut through that, there was no way I could be successful 
in carving up, fracturing, busting, or breaking a union. What was the single event, the watershed event in union busting for you that the, the light bulb came on outside of your personal life? Uh, was there something, that, an event that took place in union busting for you that you can point to and say, that is the event that I am the most ashamed of. That is the event that haunts me to this day. Yeah, there was one campaign. In fact, it's the opening chapter uh, in my book. It was a coal mine campaign in southeastern Ohio uh, where I didn't have enough staff to effectively work that campaign because the mine was spread over, the mining company was spread over a quarter of the state of Ohio and actually in northern Kentucky. Uh, so I went to one of my predecessor firms uh, and contracted some of their consultants uh, to work my campaign and took a percentage of their fees uh, to get them involved. And it was the first time in a while that I had worked with people that I hadn't been around for many, many years. Uh, so most of the work that I saw and assessed was my own work, which I considered to be very polished, very smooth, and any time I could for self-justification I would insert something that I thought was worker friendly. Well, when I worked with these former colleagues and I saw how crass and how rough and how uh, uh, terroristic their tactics were, how just raw and blatant, uh, it was the first time in many years that I was forced to look in a mirror, however cracked that mirror was. And it enabled me to start looking directly at some of the victims of my work. Uh, I always had a wall between me uh, and the people that uh, uh, I was destroying through union busting because I worked through their supervisors. Uh, I decided it was time to take a real look at these people beyond just being names on charts uh, uh, and strategy sheets. Uh, so that particular campaign was the campaign turning point as far as my eventual conversion. But even then, it took me another four years from that campaign before I finally made the decision to step forward and publicly expose union busting. When you publish the book uh, as, a, as a, a way to make amends towards these people that you've hurt, uh, outside of the book itself, have you ever directly communicated with any of the people that you've hurt uh, and uh, apologized for, for what you've done? Have you had the opportunity to to meet with them uh, on, the, on the different side of the table and say, I'm here to help you? I have, and uh, it's been very rewarding. I, I've bumped into some of these people where I've been doing educational presentations uh, or just uh, open union meetings when a dispute was going on or perhaps at a rally, uh, and it's been very gratifying. Uh, it's been painful in the sense that some of them have not yet completely recovered from uh, what was uh, what they were impacted with, uh, but the degree of forgiveness, the 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 the, uh, uh, the welcome in attitude, um, is a, a large part of what keeps me going. Uh, I know I recently had a person up in uh, the Pacific Northwest. I made a presentation to a regional conference of a building trades union, and there was one individual, one of the delegates at this conference, uh, who came up to me. Uh, and uh, when he identified who I was, he said, he shook my hand, he said, welcome to this meeting. He said, but I want you to know that I read your book. And he said, the first time I read it, he said, when I finished reading it, I wanted to find out where you lived and I wanted to come and burn your house down. He said, but then I chose to read it a second time. And after I read it a second time, he said, I just want you to know, uh, welcome to the brotherhood and I'm proud to have you on our side. So things like that along the way you know, are, are certainly uh, a continuing motivator. Uh, and bumping into former victims has been helpful and very cleansing. Your book is a fascinating uh, tale. Have you ever thought about uh, the possibility of turning this into a movie? When the book was first being published, HBO uh, bought the movie rights and actually uh, got to the point of a proposed screenplay on the book. Uh, they had intended, as I understand, although I, I have no direct or immediate control to 
what they do they were going to produce that movie three to four years